Everybody and welcome back to another episode of Star Seed Chats. I'm Lily Nova, and we are back on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time. Today, I have Sherry Divant here with me, and we're going to be talking about the Star Seed Children. Uh, before we get started, I've partnered with Hopewell Farm CBD, and you can get 10% off with the discount code in the description if you are interested. And then I also have, I just released a deep chakra healing session with inner earth beings, channeled with the inner earth beings, where we go and clear and balance, uh, balance all of your chakras. So if you're looking for a Reiki session, I have that available also. And without further ado, hello, Sherry. Thank you so much for coming on. How's it oh, going? Good. Yeah, so I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. I love your background. It's so like perfect. Thank you. Got to get the mood right for the live activations. I love it. I love it. Uh, there was also, I, I forgot to mention also, so how I found out about you was at the, you spoke at the Galactic and Spiritual Informers Conference, and your presentation just blew me away. Um, very strong. Like, you have a very strong, like, you know what you're here to do, and you're doing it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have a very right. strong, strong wow. energy. Yeah, in the the children, like like I was just saying before we started, I don't have children. I don't know too much about children. Um, and I do get people in the audience reaching out to me asking about, you know, if, if this happens. And I've, I've actually done readings just recently on about three, like one was like eight or nine years old. Um, one was like 12, 13, one 17. And I was blown away. These are galactic readings mm -hmm. um i was blown away with all of the galactic stuff that came up and their psychic abilities were just some of them were through the roof so um yeah thank you so much for coming on i just wanted to yeah talk to you about that um so can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with the children and you also you run the um aramis creative learning center so can you tell us a little bit about that, kind of your background and how you got started in that? Yeah, sure. So it's it's an it's an eclectic story. There's so many parts to it. Um, and so I started as a registered veterinary technician. So I was an only child. I moved around a lot. I was bullied a lot by kids throughout my entire childhood. Mm -hmm. So I kind of recluse, became really introverted, really shy. I had some traumas that I experienced, which I talked about during the Galactic Conference. And um, it, it made me really doubt, you know, humanity. And I really shut myself off and I didn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. So I really turned to animals. And it was my first dog, Chelsea, who was a German shepherd that was like my best friend. And, you know, I learned to communicate to, through, uh, through her to animals. Um, and I, they have such a gentle demeanor and like they really made me feel safe and because I was also an only child I would be outside a lot um you know this was back in the day when kids went outside <laughs> and I would be outside in the creeks and stuff and I would you know be so uh feel so comfortable with the birds and the animals outside I would talk to the deer and all sorts of things um so I became so naturally as a result of that I became a, a like an animal nurse and I was going to dedicate my life to healing animals. And I had no interest in people or anything else. I really genuinely didn't care about anything but taking care of animals. Um, and so I did that for a long time. Um, and it wasn't until I had my first son when I was 23, which was not planned. Um, and he really just opened up my heart in a way I wasn't, I really wasn't expecting, nor was I looking for. Um, just all the pain and all the anger and all the resentment of the world just like, poured open and I and I went through a very like cathartic healing process, which now I can look back and I talk about very openly because I think it's important because everybody's journey, there's there are certain catalysts that really help you in the healing process. And for me, that was mine. It was the beginning of my um, healing. And the reason for that is because he was just so he was like the love that animals showed me. But beyond that, because he was my child and and we were connected. And he was just beyond 
the frequency of love. I can't even, there's no word to describe it, but it really made me feel things I hadn't felt for humanity. And, and so I wanted to, I wanted to create a better world for him. I didn't want him to be upset and hate people and not trust like I did. So I had this like ma major mom moment where I said, I'm going to change the world for you. And I know that sounds like a crazy Hallmark card, but it, you know, to moms, there's nothing you won't do for your kids. So you will do, you'll say, I will do this for you and change the world. Right. And, and we mean it. And so what that what that meant for me is that I became more spiritually open. I was always spiritual, but I became more spiritually open. And I really started to look at people differently. And I started to dissect kind of who they were. And I thought, me and what's their story? You know, why? What makes them kind of uh, aggressive or mean? All the people that I would kind of mm -hmm. shy away from. And I thought, you know, they must have a story just like mine. Maybe they're, they're, there's a reason why they're the way they are that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person because mm -hmm. I could see people looking at me thinking I was a bad person, you know, because I wasn't the nicest back before he came. So that changed everything for me. Um, and so I started uh, working more on my relationship with my family and then other people and then friends. And I started to let more people in. I still worked with animals, you know, up until maybe five years ago, I was still working with animals. So that's, you know, a good over 20 years of my life. Um, but I started, I learned Reiki. Uh, I got into energy healing for that exact reason, because I knew that there was more to the world and I wanted to help animals in a more profound way. So I learned um, energy healing because I worked in the ICU and it was really difficult to see animals in such a dire place. So I wanted to do more for them. And I really, believed in holistic and natural medicine. So I learned Reiki for them. Um, and then I started having more kids and my second kid came along, my son Skylar, who's now 10. And that's when I started opening myself up to working with people. It was around the time that he brought, and he was another catalyst for another level of awakening that I had to be ready for. And at that point, I think I was, I was ready for more. So I started to uh, I started really, you know, the way I started working with people was I started talking to people. Suddenly I started attracting more people to me in, mm -hmm. my, in my professional work environment where we had this joke that I would, that it would be like uh, Sherry's office is open for business. And, and during office time when I worked at the zoo and people would come to me and they would ask my advice about anything in life. And suddenly mm -hmm. I was just helping all these people didn't matter their age, didn't matter their seniority over me or any of that. I was like suddenly became like this counselor for for all of the people that I knew. And I'm like, where's this where's this knowledge coming from? <laughs> you know, I think it was like locked away and hidden for such a long time. So yeah. it started with that. And then I worked. Uh, I had a brief animal communication business and healing business on the side. So I went to people's homes and I worked on their animals energetically, did communication. And through that, I found, um, which I was not expecting at the time, in hindsight, now it makes so much sense to me, but really a majority of the problems our animals have are results of our, the owners and the healing that they need. And it projects onto their animals and then their animals react and have behavioral issues or they take on too much of our healing. Uh, they they want to heal us. They take on too much of our energy and then they become blocked. So I found myself telling the owners a lot of the time, hey, you know, I think you could benefit from some healing because your animal's taking on too much for you or your animal's trying to show you something or mirror your behavior. And a lot of them weren't receptive to it uh, back then. And so I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. And I just started working with people. And I it it really was a whirlwind of events once I started opening myself up to people because that's when the galactic part started coming through. And their star family of the person would come through in my sessions with just just a Reiki session. It wasn't even anything more than that. Just basic, mm -hmm. let me do chakra balancing on somebody. And then all of a sudden, galactic beings were coming in. And it scared the bejesus out of me because I didn't have anybody to talk to about it back then. No reference, no idea like if I should be scared or not. But I really trusted my intuition and I went with how I felt. And I always, and the thing is, if I didn't, if I wasn't in fear, they would always tell me in their telepathic way, whether it's through vision or through words or some sort of energy, I come in peace every single time, every single time. And so I learned to trust those. And there were a few that came through that I wasn't sure. And then I would, they were, I was able to not open myself up to them. And then I started doing these readings and galactic readings. And so that was like a whole part of my journey wow. and through working with parents that's when the children started coming in. So I worked with parents 
uh, and they would bring their children to me because they wanted me to do kind of their children were suff like su suffering with school. They were suffering with the labels, uh, autism, Asperger's, ADHD, dyslexia, any labeled children. They were bringing them to me because they said, Sherry, is there a spiritual explanation for this? They were actually seeking one that I wasn't even thinking about at the time. I didn't ask for that part of my journey to come through. And I suddenly found myself connecting with the New Earth children. And then I connected to Dolores Cannon. I channeled her for a while. We were communicating and it was beautiful. And she helped me a lot under, to understand the New Earth children. Um, I don't talk about that that much. Um, now, if I rewind just a little bit, my daughter Aramis um, came to me about eight, nine months to a year before I got pregnant with her. So I had two sons at the time, knew I wanted three, but wasn't sure when. And it wasn't actually the best timing, but she came through and said, you know, I'm coming in and I'm going to be your daughter and I need help. And uh, will you help me with my journey? And I was like, of course, I said, yeah, absolutely. And she taught me so much because I channeled her pretty much every week throughout my pregnancy. Once once I did get pregnant with her. And your I daughter? Have your daughter. daughter? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I have, I have journals of information of her teaching me. So she's the one that really taught me. It's like Dolores Cannon started it for a big, in a big way. And then she took it from there and taught me all about the new earth children to a whole nother level. So I would say 90% of what I know, I didn't read in books. It's, it's came from her and her channelings before she came. Um, so I thought that our role together, once she came was that we would, we would open up a metaphysical center and kind of teach parents um, kind of like a Sunday school type of thing, but non-religious, like teach parents to bring their children in and they can learn about energy and, and Reiki and crystals and all the metaphysical stuff. No, no academics. Um, and it's, it's morphed into something so much bigger, which we can get into, but I don't want to talk for too long, but you can see the road to, to mm -hmm. where I have gotten to now, uh, was it just got, it would built upon based mm -hmm. on certain things that I think I was ready for, you know, you have to be ready for things in your life and then the doors open up. And if it happens too soon, a lot of people, you know, they, they really struggle. And I think for me, everything happened exactly in the timing that was right so that I would be ready for it. Maturity wise, just everything, everything in my life had to be exactly aligned up where I needed it to be so that the next thing could come. Um, otherwise I don't think I would have been prepared for it. Right. Wow. What a journey. That's amazing. <laughs> would you say, did it really jump? about two years ago, whenever COVID happened with the, the children, or you said whenever your daughter, you were pregnant with your daughter, that's when that started coming through. About Yeah, COVID. when when my daughter, my daughter's now eight, uh, eight and a half. So I would mm -hmm. say when she was born, I started to, to work with more children and mm -hmm. parents. And I would say actually five years ago, before COVID period, was when I learned um, a bulk of what I know, and I really started working with more children. And then it was during COVID that I started to work with more people around the world right. because of the interfacing that happened as a result of COVID. You know, us being on Zoom and doing and YouTube and podcasts, I started to go on them. And then I started to attract parents all over the world saying, I want to, can I, you know, I want to talk to you about my child. And that's how I got kind of where I am now is through after that period. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. As soon as COVID happened, um, I knew I'm like, okay, the schools need to be torn down. <laughs> we need we need new schools. We need like new education. We need new everything. Also nutrition. That's that's how I started uh, getting into. That was kind of part of my awakening was the nutrition and realizing how corrupt the, the food industry um, was and everything. But I wanted to ask you, what kinds of messages would uh, Dolores Cannon and your daughter give you as they were training you? I know there's probably like so much and that might be, might be kind of a loaded question, but is there anything that, that kind of um, <clears throat> pops up that they were talking about the new earth children? Yeah, well, with Dolores before my, obviously she came first. So I'll talk mm -hmm. about the messages that came through around the time that, so I did transpersonal hip, the reason how this came about, cause I'm sure people are wondering like, how did she just pop in my life? So I was, I learned transpersonal hypnotherapy. I, be, I went through the master level and, and that started because of hypnobirthing because I became a hypnobirthing practitioner for years and I helped women and their, and their, her, their, them and their partners go through a more natural birth using self-hypnosis, relaxation, breathing. Um, so they didn't need to be medicated. Um, 
And so it was that that I fell in love. It was because of that. That's why I fell in love with hypnosis, because I didn't really know much about it before I took that training. And that's what the training is all about, is helping women uh, do their own self-directed hypnosis, but also take them through uh, several hypnosis before they go into labor to help them prepare. And so I really became, uh, I really loved doing that. And so I kept, I went, I went further in the training. Now, my mom at the same time, because my mom and I tend to do a lot of things parallel of each other. Uh, she took QHHT and she became a practitioner. <clears throat> so she was the one that introduced me to Dolores Ken and I had heard about her previously, but I didn't know that much about her. And when she was telling me about what she was doing as a typical me, I'm like, oh man, yours sounds like more fun. I want to do that. You know, that's how I am. I just want to do everything. I'm like, and she's like, no, you, you're doing what you need to do for a reason. But what I realized is that her training was very similar to my training. It was, it's almost identical versions of hypnotherapy because it's in, it, it embodies mind, body, and spirit. Whereas traditional hypnosis is just mind, body. They don't incorporate spirit. There's no multidimensionality and they really don't get into past lives. They only regress you into this within the fir- the same life that you're currently in. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I started to read uh, Dolores Cannon's books. I read, I, I bought all of them and I read probably half of them. They're quite long. There's a lot, they're very long. So I didn't have that much time, but I read a good, at least half of them. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is she started to come to me through my sessions and she was, and she would tell me, you know, um, there's so much more to your journey than you realize. Children are going to start coming to you, <clears throat> excuse me, and you are going to help with the new earth children. Then that's when she told me to read the three waves of volunteers, which is the first one I read, one of the first ones I read. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned a lot from her. And the funny thing is I asked the universe to validate that I was not going crazy and I was actually communicating with Dolores Cannon, right? Because I mean, anyone can say that. And you know what happened? I ordered, I was ordering her books on Amazon most of the time. And I ordered like the last set used from random people. It wasn't, it wasn't all the same. So I, I ordered Convoluted Universe Part 3 on Amazon years and years and years ago from some random person on a used copy. I get the book in the mail. It was number three and it was signed. Dolores Cannon. It was an original signed copy and the person must not have realized it or I don't know. The universe brought it to me. And it was right after I asked for validation. And now I have a signed copy of it from her. And I just knew that that was her way of saying, yes, I, you know, let's move past this. Uh, we are communicating. And mm-hmm. and she helped me a lot. She just helped me to understand New Earth Children, what the third wave really means after she passed and that book was done. And that mm-hmm. they are pay, playing such a pivotal role in our reality. They are really the pioneers, the way shores in a way that we could, she couldn't even explain back then because uh, humanity wasn't ready to understand it fully. And she said, there are people like yourself. Now, not just me. She made it clear, like, you know, you're special, but, you know, there are other people special too. Like there are many of, of you that are going to work with the new earth children and, and, mm-hmm. um, and tell humanity about their gifts and help them and be a guide for them. So you need to be ready to step up to this. And so meanwhile, I'm that's happening. And then my daughter is teaching me, like my head was about to explode because there was so much information coming through. And I was looking around like, wow, what? everybody needs to know about this. This is incredible. Right. And so they both taught me a lot, very similar things that kind of overlapped. But Dolores really touched my heart in a special way because I wasn't expecting it. Um, and Aramis is, is different because she's, you know, she's a part of me, she's connected to me and and she's now here with me. So it's a different energy, but they're both absolutely beautiful experiences that, that were true catalysts in my journey, I think, to where Mm -hmm. I am now. That's amazing. So curious, does your, does Aramis's like higher self still talk to you or guide you on things like this since she's born? Probably. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, that's actually a really good question. So what happened was I communicated with her every day throughout my pregnancy. Every week I did a a long two, three page, four times, sometimes four page channel message for her. And I realized a lot of times the messages were for were not for me. And she even said, as you can clearly see, these messages are for humanity. So I did put a lot of her channelings in one of the books that I published that um, that I think is divinely guided that book. So after she was born. Uh, we went through, I went through a period of time where I really was having trouble connecting with her, probably for the first six months. 
And what she told me was, I need to be earthbound. You need to let me go. Meaning I need to be able to, to fully anchor in. So I, it's best that you communicate with me in the present moment and not, um, not how, like how we have been. And that was really hard for me to hear because she was so clear when I would connect with her. But in a baby form, it's really hard to do that when you're looking at them and they are there, but not really there intellectually where you can, you know, interface and speak with each other like I could before. So I really mm -hmm. let it go and I, and I followed her wishes and I didn't even communicate with her for probably the first couple of years because mm -hmm. I just became really present in bring, being a mom. Mm -hmm. And I, and I would once in a while, um, but I really just, I just wanted to honor her request of being very present in the physical and she didn't want to get pulled out. And so I didn't for a long time. And now more so than ever, of course, um, I've been able to do that because at the end of the day, she's still an eight year old and mm -hmm. she is, you know, dealing with her own level of programming that everybody has, no matter what you try to do to shelter your kid, they're still going to be programmed in some way. It's just part of the matrix. Um, so there's sometimes that I need to communicate with her in another, in another way than through her and I, because she just doesn't get it. You know, she's not, she's, she's not there consciously connecting to that part of her because she's having this human experience. And so it can be quite challenging to, to speak with her in the way that is, is that I was used to. So now I do, but I didn't for a long time. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. I didn't even think about like your, your child can be, actually like a guide, a spirit guide for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, you had mentioned like, so I did want to ask you about kind of like negative programming for the parents out there and people who um, who are just interested in this to to help spread awareness. So what, what types of kind of negative programming are you seeing with, well, with your children and with the children that you're seeing? So you see a ton of, of different gifted children. So um, about like the the example I wrote down was like traditional schooling. But yeah, can you give some examples yeah. on that for what people can look out for? Uh, well, unfortunately, Lily, uh, it's it's everywhere. It's all around. Yeah. It's it's in every facet of this matrix. And it's really hard to escape it unless you literally live off the grid or you're indigenous and you can in, in you're in your tribal you know space. It's it's almost impossible to get away from. Um, because it's everywhere from the moment you are actually the moment you're conceived in the womb, they target the mother um, through through many facets, through, uh, you know, these things that they don't necessarily need through some medications, the diet. I mean, and stressing, stressing the mom out, knowing that they're going to have to give birth at some point, And that keeps them in fight or flight in, in a fear mode, survival mode, the entire pregnancy, because they're so scared of the birth process because they portray it in such a negative way on purpose, which is why I became a hypnobirthing practitioner because I wanted to help women work out of that. So by the time they went into labor, they wouldn't be in fight or flight. They wouldn't be in sympathetic mode. They'd be in parasympathetic mode, able to connect with their baby, their womb and have a natural birth. So that's how they start. Then secondly, once they come out of the womb, they start with these. And you can see even people who don't have children have seen the the exponential increase in those since birth than they were doing in the 70s, even when I was born in the 80s, um, even the 90s, they're, they're, ex they're double, tripled the amount. So that is, is part of it. Um, the toxins in the food, in the water, the fluoride, uh, the, okay, we've got to be careful with words, but the, the things in the sky that are, that look like clouds, the trails, um, you know, the, the formula, um, mm -hmm. that's all before they even get into walk into a school. So before mm -hmm. they've even gotten to school and the cartoons on the T the tell live vision, the, the, the programming and, and subliminal programming from television. Now everybody has one of these things, um, even kids that are one, two years old. So they're watching, you know, all the, the social media, the TikToks, the Instagram, all the videos, all of them have subliminal messages behind them. Uh, then we have the electromagnetic frequencies that are emitted everywhere all over the place. There are grids, grid systems that people don't even know about that are actually galactic grid systems that come through that grid, uh, grid school buildings, um, churches, and certain public areas, especially where children are in the big parks where kids go. I'm talking about amusement parks. Um, 
So that's all before the kids even go into school. And when they go into school, it's the fluorescent lighting is designed in a way to disrupt the harmony in the brain synapses. Uh, the schools are designed like prisons as far as how they are structured. Um, mm -hmm. Teachers are, are taught in a way or trained in a way rather that it's, it's all about programming. It's all about memorization. They're not actually learning anything of value in there. They're being taught mm -hmm. to to listen to in a hierarchy structure, listen and speak when spoken to, be good little girls and boys, follow this person, go in this line. There's all this structure. It's all about memorization, no creativity at all. So the light is slowly dimming from these exponential multidimensional beings mm -hmm. from, the, from the time of birth throughout their childhood, early development. And then when they go into the, the school system, which is a system, um, then their light just completely just, Dim, dims more and more here as they go through until they leave and they are taught about competing with everybody. They don't have any creative uh, cre creative abilities because it's all so structured and standardized testing. Um, I mean, it's absolutely, oh, wow. it's, it's a lot. I mean, they're, let's just say that they're, they're bombarded. I mean, I, yeah. that is just a small fraction of it that I just mentioned to you. There's so much more. It's in the music that they listen to. It's in the air that we breathe. Uh, and it's in the medicinals that we give them. I mean, it's literally the entire environment is is, mm -hmm. is gridded in a way to mm -hmm. suppress and lower their vibration. So they're easily programmed and they forget who they are. They lose their mm -hmm. life essence, their life spark. They don't connect to, connect to their intuition anymore. They don't trust their intuition because they're constantly told, no, you're wrong. That's not right. You know, oh, you're imagining mm -hmm. that. Um, they get and made fun of, get made, made fun of, too. and they don't have anybody to talk to about it because a lot of the, the new earth children are coming in with a lot of the children that maybe have been in, in the, in the system for a long time, like life after life, I mean, and they're not seeing the angels and all of, and all of the beautiful things that the other children are seeing naturally because they're not closed off just yet. And they don't share it because they don't want to be made fun of, you mm -hmm. know, and so they don't, they keep it to themselves or their parents tell them to stop making it up. Um, and that's everything that we're talking about isn't even including dreamscape. It's not even including the dream time or the sleep time, which is where the children are attacked the most. See, yeah, that's I wanted to um, ask you about that also, because I have had some some people asking me about, you know, their child having nightmares. Um, so, yeah. So you've you've talked to children who experience these two and it's basically like an, an attack on the astral plane. Yeah. It, and I. You know, Lily, it's crazy because again, a lot of the stuff I know I didn't ask for. It's just it it came up session after session after session. Right. And it started with children telling me that they were seeing shadow beings. I didn't know what they were talking. Well, everyone knows what a shadow being is, but these mm -hmm. specific shadow beings that had red eyes. And I had one child tell me about it. Next thing you know, another child in Australia is telling me about the same thing. Next thing you know, someone in Canada. Uh, I mean everywhere all over the united states all over the world in different countries they were seeing the same type of beings different variations but basically the same thing and so that really got me diving deep into okay what's going on with our children and what i found out over the years this is probably more than five years worth of research that uh you know the, the movie nightmare on elm street if those that are remember that back then <laughs> But uh, that that was a true it was a true story in 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 the sense that that is how they, that is how we are attacked when we are in the astral plane that is how a lot of the dark entities or the the matrix will um, come in on the I, I always call it the back door they come in through the back door and they torment the children because they can get to them much easier because there's no there's no um, time and space in the astral so they can get to your child no matter where you live. If you're at the top of a mountain, you think you're hidden, like no matter where you go, how many covers you put over their head, you know, they can they can access them and they mm -hmm. will uh, scare them. They torment them. You know, the movie Monsters, Inc. I mean, there's a lot of stories to depict what actually occurs and it, they scare them and they attack mm -hmm. them. And SIDS is something I talk about, which is quite controversial and people don't like don't believe when I say this. But the children actually told me that. I didn't look, I didn't ask for that information through an adult session. It was in a, through a children's session that I was told that SIDS back in the eighties and nineties, when it was at, at its heightened was um, astral attacks from the dark side 
to cut off the life force energy of a lot of the star seeds that came in because they knew that what they were here to do and they disconnected them basically in the astral and they died. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why there's no explanation for their death. They died in the crib. They call it crib death because yeah, they died in their crib. They went to bed and they didn't wake up because they were attacked through the dream state. Jeez Louise. Um, yeah, that's terrible. That I've just I've been working with the Arcturians a lot the past couple of weeks, specifically on clearing the astral. So I know that that's a really, a really big part of it. What would you what would you do? How what would you suggest a parent can do if their child is experiencing those nightmares or attacks? Yeah, that's another great question. And the number one is the, the number one most important thing is believing your children, because the problem is a lot of parents, they don't want to deal with it or they tell their mm -hmm. child it's fine. You know, it's not a big deal or they say stop making it up and they discount mm -hmm. it. So the children are going to bed more terrified. And the problem is when the children go to bed in a frightened state, they're more likely to attract that energy towards them. It's almost like they're putting a beacon out into the astral. Come here and attack me. I'm, I'm in this room right here. Um, and that's and that's the unfortunate thing. The, num the second thing is they want to sleep with their parents. And the reason for that is because they feel more safe. And, and I talked about this at that conference, and I've said it a few times. One of the most profound sessions I've ever had was a child that came to me, or came to me in a session, rather, and he wouldn't sleep with his he wouldn't sleep by himself and he would scream every single night and the mom and dad were kind of at their wits end saying we've, we've let him sleep long enough with us you know sherry can you get him to go back to his room and i said I, probably not but let me find out what's going on uh, because i never try to tell kids what to do like i'm just there to as a facilitator of information like mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell them what what to do um and this child told me you know animals sleep in packs why don't you uh, actually, specifically, what he said was wolf sleep in packs. Why don't you? And it was a really profound experience for me, because even though I was already on his side and uh, clearly on my daughter's side, because I slept in her room for years because she started having night terrors and I believed her and I slept in her bed with her every single night for years. My husband and I didn't even sleep together for years until he finally came to me and he's like, hey, I need my wife. Like, you know, enough is enough. And, and so I had to reevaluate our living situation. And remember, I did have a husband and, and I put her with her brothers and she was okay with that. And it was fine. It worked out. Luckily she had older brothers that were willing to take her in. But if we were in a situation where she was an only child, like that could have caused, you know, trouble. So I understand not everybody can do the same things, but I believed my daughter and I noticed on the nights that she slept with me, she would always hold on to me at some point during the night. And sometimes I woke up and she's squeezing my hand and, but she slept much better um, than the nights that I tried to sneak out, let's say, and then go back mm -hmm. to my bed. And then she would come screaming in the middle of the night, like inconsolable screaming, like mm -hmm. someone was attacking her screaming. And, and I just said, you know, I, I have to believe her. And so number one is believing them. But number two is just let them sleep with you. There's a reason for it. And I think it's a design of the dark system here that we have separated because indigenous cultures and tribes, they didn't sleep in separate rooms and these big houses was separated by walls and doors. That wasn't a part. This is a new construct. This is a modern day construct. And I think that it's on purpose to get our children separated from even from the time that they're babies. You know, they made these big deals out of making these beautiful um, nurseries. Where, the, where these babies that are infants sleep in this room by themselves. No wonder they scream all night crying because mm -hmm. they they don't they need to be around. They don't they know they recognize energetically that there is nobody with them and they cry because they're scared. So all these books that say, you know, let them cry it out. I was I was never OK with that. I never did that with my children because mm -hmm. I, I like they're crying for a reason. They need me around. So mm -hmm. second thing is to let them, you know, unfortunately, you, you might need to sleep with them. Maybe you don't sleep in their room, but you bring them into your room um, mm -hmm. and, and let them be with you or let them sleep with their brother or sibling siblings mm -hmm. because they need to feel like they have safety in numbers. So the more of them there are, the more they feel safe. Now, mm -hmm. there are other things you can do on top of that, like um, gritting their room with crystals. If that's something that you're into, you can... Um, uh, use sage or palo santo or copal and and clear the rooms and etc but my biggest thing is your intention 
You need to teach your children. And when they're young, you do it for them. When they can't speak for themselves, you say, I do not consent to any energy or any manipulation or any um, anything that's not of my child's highest good. And you make sure before they go to bed that you you say that on their behalf because you have the ability to do that as their guardian. That is part of free will is parent has the authority, not authority, but the ability to speak on behalf of them. That's mm -hmm. part of our free will <clears throat> because it's in their highest good. But once they're old enough, you start teaching them. I do not consent. Um, I, uh, I only attract and positive light beings around me while I sleep, you know, anything like that, that teaches mm -hmm. them. And then they, and then we teach them to dim their light in many different ways you can teach them because the other issue is they are beacons of light that flash because of their frequency. And so they are attractive to the dark, to minion. And I mean, all sorts of energy. Sometimes it's just minion energy. That's like a firefly that's trapped. It's a uh, uh, moth that's attracted to the flame. I mean, mm -hmm. so teach them to dim their light. So imagine them as almost like those Himalayan salt lamps that are really popular, which I recommend everyone have them in every room, mm -hmm. but most of them come with dimmers, dimmer switches. So I teach my children, I had taught them when they were younger, just like this dimmer switch, when before we go to bed, we turn the light down to so it's not as bright when you sleep. Imagine your light turning down for sleep time too. That way they are not as visible to the outside mm -hmm. world. They can also use things like the covers as a um, metaphor for them, their light being put away. So now you're covering your light. So they put the covers over their head and now they are in this magical um firmament that keeps them protected whatever it is and whatever works for them you do it in a way that is fun and and it and it's empowering mm -hmm. for them and mm -hmm. you make it a routine so those are just a few of the things that i recommend there's so many more that you can try you can play 432 hertz 528 hertz music very low all throughout the night the dark energies don't like that the, that frequency so they tend to leave them alone you can have selenite or tourmaline or, or mm -hmm. uh, shungite or things like that under their pillow, have them hold on to it if they're old enough to do that. You know, there's lots of different things you can do. You can reiki their stuffed animals if you know how, and then have them sleep with it. There's so many things that I've, I've tried. Mm -hmm. I literally think I've tried everything. And sometimes I just want parents, I want parents to know two things watching this. One, it's getting better. Five years ago to where we are now, there are beings and there are lots of angels and beings that are fighting in the astral to clear them. And I would say a good majority of them are gone. And if they are, a lot of them are out of the way and they're not messing with children anymore. That's number one. So I'm not trying to scare anyone because this has actually gotten so much better to the point where I don't think for much longer we're going to be dealing with this because they're going to be pushed into a density that we're out of, or they're going to remain in a density and we're going to be out of it is probably the better way to say mm -hmm. that. But also, um, if everything fails and, and nothing seems to be working, the best thing you can do is sleep with them. Mm -hmm. That will feel, there's nothing more that feel, makes them feel safe than being with mom or dad. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are all really, really great um, explanation and examples. I like how you said that it is changing. I feel, yeah, I feel the energy picking up so much. There are times where I wake up and as I'm becoming conscious, I'm realizing that I'm with Archangel Michael and these other beings clearing the astral realm as I sleep at night. And that's just, it's been coming up a lot. So I, I think it is, um, it's like go time right now. We are doing some deep cleaning and things are about to get really good. Looks messy, but um <sighs> Yeah, I feel that. Um, I wanted to ask, so you mentioned that some children like see angels. What are some of, some of the kind of gifts and things that you are seeing um, with children? So they, so they have more light. They are, you know, higher vibrational. They're, they're, they probably just like, I don't have a kid, but they probably feel like just pure love and, and they're just so innocent. But are you seeing any um, children that have kind of these interesting special abilities? Yes, absolutely. A lot of them, um, they're coming in very psychic, so they can read people's energies. They're human lie detectors, so their parents will say, you know, I can't, I can't fool them. You know, they just, they can read me really well. Uh, my daughter is that way. I can never yell. I can never lie to her and be like, oh, you know, this, we should, she could just tell, you know. 
um, they they are they're healers innately. So they feel like they can just heal the animals that they're around or they make their parents feel much better just being around them or they are out in, in public with their families and people will naturally gravitate towards them because they have some aura around them that is very attractive and people are like, I, you know, and they're, and they're changed by these children where they think about them for days or weeks later, they can't get them off of their mind because they've imprinted on them in some positive way. Um, but these children remember their past lives. I talk to children all the time. They tell me where, what density they're in, um, who their star family is, what planet they came from or what star system they came from, how many lives they've had. They're here to heal mom. Or don't you know that the, that the world is, is the, the world here is off and wrong and the colors are off and, and this isn't the right, this isn't right. And they, and they can see multidimensional beings. They can see uh, animals in, interdimensionally, Bigfoot, fairies, creatures I've never even heard of that they described to me. Um, positive creatures though, like beings. Um, I mean, they have such wisdom that the things that come out of their mouth, regardless of their age, blows people away, both their parents and anybody around them. They're highly mm -hmm. intelligent. Um, you know, and a lot of their bodies are changing too. They are they are really preparing us for where what what's to come. You know, we're going to be eating. I've told I've been told <clears throat> we're going to be eating about two thirds less food in the next ten to fifteen years. Um, what are some of the other things? So they are eating less. So, anyways, the point of that is that they're eating less food, and mm -hmm. many of them are naturally vegetarians without their parents asking, or they have, they gravitate to some sort of dietary thing. Mm -hmm. Many of them are not used to eating because they came in without bot. They, they came from a place without having a physical form. So they're adjusting to being here um, and eating. They don't understand eating. They don't understand a lot of the stuff that we do. So it's kind of weird for them. So they are just like, they may only want a liquid diet. They may only like a diet that has a certain consistency, like oatmeal and rice is a really common one, or they'll only eat fruit because where they came from, they only ate fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're extremely psychic. They're extremely gifted beyond their years. And I think finally the labeled children, you know, the autist collective and <coughs> um, those types of children that are mislabeled are truly just here to show us another way and to be more telepathic, to be more heart centered, to heal, to eat differently, to think differently, to act differently, to do everything differently that they have been falsely labeled for such a long time and looked at as as something is wrong with them or they're disabled in some way when in reality i think now we're finally starting to see oh wow they, they have really beautiful gifts and they're here to teach and guide uh, in their own way but and not in the traditional way where it's a teacher in front of a classroom telling you what to do they make you they make you do it in another way so if they're mm -hmm. not speaking they're encouraging you to be more telepathic and 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 connect energetically with them so they're not going to be verbal. Um, they won't. They won't do certain things that children are are here that do, that they typically do because they're not here to be a child. They're here to to help you heal and mirror things in your life that need that need your attention. So they come into your life as your greatest teacher. You're thinking, oh, that I'm the parent. I should be teaching them. When in reality, many, if not all, of the children coming in now are here to teach their parent something and to heal their parent in some way. So my biggest advice to parents is don't fight it. You know, just let them be who they are and you will be surprised in a positive way what they're trying to show you. And they are here to teach you something of value. And it starts with you in the home, but it will relay in most facets of life and they will teach many and guide many, but it has to be in their own way. They need to show you the, the way that works best from where they come from where they come from or previously maybe lemuria atlantis because i believe that the lemurians are coming in full circle and a lot of these children are mirroring or modeling the lemurian way or arcturian philosophy or lyran philosophy let's say or telogian or inner earth wherever they come from they're all coming from everywhere it's not just one place it's not just galactic many are coming from inner earth i i work with many children um, that are here to to help us uh, connect with the inner earth beings. I had a girl, a 12 year old girl recently that is from inner earth and is here to help us terraform outer earth. I was like, 
what's that going to look like? And she told me how she, that she's here to do it. And I was like, I didn't even understand half the stuff she said. I was just like, okay, I get we're terraforming in some positive way and you're going to help us do it later. And I guess that's all we need to know. So the point is <clears throat> we don't even understand a lot of what they're saying and that's okay. They're just slowly introducing these ideas to us to, to get us prepared and ready for what's to come. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's just, that's incredible. I saw like a video not too long ago where it was this, there was this girl, she's maybe like seven years old. She was telling her mom how she was a blue avian and on this other planet, she did this and she had something where like to do surgery, they, she, she could look through her skin. She's like, we don't cut them open, but we just hang something, hover something over them and we can see into their skin. And it's just incredible what these uh, yeah. kids know. Um, so I was going to ask, so basically like all the children being born now are like, that's new earth children. So as the, as these young ones start getting older, basically in the next like 10 to 20 years, everything's going to be completely different. Is that kind of what you? Yes. Yes. I think starting around 2012, I was told actually to after around 2000, that is when a huge influx of crystal children came, which were the, the where, where the children that came around, like when my son, who's now 18, my first, you know, they came in to bring love to the planet. They, they came in to bring the frequency of love because there was no frequency of love here. It was very dwindled down to pretty much nothing. Mm -hmm. And so they came here to open our hearts. And so really starting around 2000, a lot came in, but there were still a lot that were from the old system still being born. And then around 2012, most, I would say 75%, again, roughly from my understanding, mm -hmm. roughly 75% that have come in since 2012 were new earth star children coming again from all over the place, including inner earth. So there are still some that are coming in that are still part of the matrix. And then around the COVID period, that's when 2019, 2020, that's when now 100%, it stopped being allowed. Nobody is allowed to come in and reincarnate or come in, incarnate really, um, on this planet anymore. That is not a certain frequency. You can't even get in. And I actually, I really want to say, I want to take that back. I want to say it was more like 2015 is when I remember hearing that 2015 was the period where they cut it off and nobody could come in unless you were of a certain vibration minimally that you were only here to help shift the trajectory in a positive way. So basically no one's coming in to learn lessons or the old, the old way, you know, I'm just coming in to experiment. No, it's, you have to align with the ascension and you have to have a purpose to be here to help raise the frequency and bring in light and be an architect of the new world, a way shower, pioneer, innovator, bring in technology, be a healer, all of one of all of those things or a combination of that has. So nobody being born right now is if of the old, let's say this wheel of samsara, the reincarnation wheel that is not being allowed anymore. That's amazing. That's really good news. <laughs> yeah. That is really good news. Okay, awesome. Um, so just a couple other questions. Um, what kind, I had written down like what kinds of messages the children, the kids are saying, but it sounds like that just everything. They're here to, you know, help raise the frequency. They're teaching love. They're teaching telepathy and te telepathy and all of these different kind yeah. of, uh, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> In all of these uh, different ways, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about. So, like I was saying before, like I don't have any children. The children kind of it wasn't really on my um, on my radar. But then, not too long ago, like in the last few months, the the star beings started showing me a lot of children. I'm like, okay, and they were showing me like babies being born, um, and I took it as like the children being born right now. Like what you were saying, there's no more unless they're unless you are here to raise the frequency and in very special coming in with you know psychic abilities and all of that and then they were also showing me um a lot of hybrid children and i did sessions with um a couple a couple young ones who um who who had seen their hybrid brothers and sisters who had visited them so it 
I don't know, it was really sweet. And then hybrid children started kind of coming around me. I, I found out that I have hybrid brothers and sisters out there. So I've had, I've had some visit me and it does, it feels like love. It's just, this just started like coming up. So I was curious. Um, yeah, I'm like, children are new to me. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. so much coming, Lily. Like it's it's incredible. I could talk for hours with you on on the stuff that I I have that has been brought to my attention. I mean, yes, I do have clients that are hybrids themselves, like children that are hybrids that know they're hybrids that are telling me they're hybrids, or I know their parents know their child may not know yet because they're too young, but they're telling me that they're hybrids. And I, and I was able to confirm that there are a lot more hybrids than ever before. And that is also a good testament of where we are in humanity. I always say my marker point to know that we are truly moving forward because I don't follow dates. I don't follow the popular ideals that are out there. I stopped listening to that a long time ago. So the way I know that, that we're moving forward as a, as a collective is through the, is my my sessions with children and adults. I learn a lot through my sessions with adults. I don't want to discount adults. I work with a lot of adults too. And I receive a lot of information through their sessions as well, because they're here to help as well. The children need us adults to help them. So the adults are activating right now. Their star families are coming through telling me some amazing things as well. And a lot of the adults are finding out that they are hybrids, that they, that they didn't know it. But where we are in the collective right now in the collective frequency is we have risen high enough by the earth, the energy of the earth, the planet, Terra, but also our physical bodies have changed enough that these hybrids can actually thrive here. They don't need as much, um, as much genetic altering as they did previously. And so there's so much more possible right now than ever before. And that's only going to continue um, as we, as we advance farther into the, to our future, um, mm -hmm. because we're, it's, it's not stopping. We're going to continue raising in density. Our bodies are changing. The, the, the collective is, is shifting in density and consciousness and then the planet. So there's so many levels and variations to mm -hmm. that, that when people see all these children coming through, there's, I can't even tell you there's us, our bodies are changing. So we will start to bring in more children even women that are past the, the age of typical pregnancy are going to have the opportunity if they want to, to bring in more children, because this is what I see is, is changing. I have been told that the gestation period will be much shorter. So uh, I was shown five months. It'll, it'll shift from not, it's already starting to shift down. There's more women giving birth in their 35th, 36th, 37th week. So in the eighth month than ever before, and now, and it's going to shift down into more like six to five to all the way down where I have been shown three months will be our, our gestation period at some point in the future. Don't know exactly the year of that. And they're all be, they will all be conscious pregnancies, meaning all, all the, if you choose to get pregnant or I, or anybody else, it will be a choice. There's no more accidental pregnancies. It's a conscious choice between you and the person that you're bringing this being in and the being coming through and you know they're coming, you're ready for it, your body will shift and adapt energetically first. There's so many things that will happen with that. So that's going to change. But we're also going to, portals are going to be opened up so that our star families will be able to come through and will be interstellar. And so we might have our hybrid children. Many people have hybrid children that they're not even aware of somewhere else will, that will be able to come here and interface with us. And so those children are coming. It's like, it's kind of a crazy movie if you think about all the possibilities that are coming that anyone watching me talk right now that isn't aware or awake will surely say that this lady's off her and rocker and should make a movie. But it's okay because I, you know, five years ago I may not have spoken about this publicly, but now I feel like I am doing a disservice to humanity if I don't, because these are things that I'm getting in my sessions every day and I'm co cooperating if there is such a thing with other intuitives and people like you that are also doing sessions, seeing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, if she's seeing it all over, all over in the other side of the world and I'm seeing it here, it has to be true. Where else would we be getting this information mm -hmm. from? So there's a lot that's going to be changing. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, we got to share these things with each other. And I was thinking about this is earlier, all of the, yeah, if anybody who is not, no, and 
awake or aware of any of this stuff, they they would probably like they are freaking crazy. I probably would have thought I sounded crazy just I know. two and a half, three years ago. But I mean, it's real. It's real. Like we're seeing it. We're experiencing it. Things are yeah, shifting yeah. fast. So it's going to be a really interesting next um, next next few years. But then really, I feel like in the next next decade, like. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have a totally different earth um, in the 2030s by that. Definitely. Um, yeah, but yeah, I just thought the hybrid children was super interesting. I found out that I had a uh, hybrid family up there and they just started coming around. And I was like, what? Like I never expect, I would have never expected that. And I think it is a lot more common um, than we think. Yeah. Um, so, so you have a... Uh, kind of like closing it up, you have a creative learning center. Do you want to kind of share a little bit about that? I think that's super cool. You teach children about Reiki, all of these wonderful things. So do you kind of want to share? Sure. Like, like, yeah. Classes? Yeah. And that kind of goes full circle to one of the questions you asked in the beginning about my daughter, Aramis. So I found out uh, that what we're here to do together is what I have created for her, which is her legacy, which is why I call it Aramis Creative Learning Center. So around the COVID period, um, I launched uh, Divinely Guided Children, which was my, what I thought I was supposed to be doing was a, like a metaphysical kind of center in my, because I, I used to have a wellness center in Maryland where I used to live. And it was focused mostly with adults, but then I started doing sessions with children and I taught a lot of different classes. So I started Divinely Guided Children where I invited children to do children's classes based on the adult classes. So Reiki, crystals, pendulums, meditation, yoga, things like that. And I hired people and that's how what I have now got started. But because it was in a very, I'll just say special area, they weren't open to um, what I was doing for a lot of reasons. One, because I was against this and this and they didn't like that. So it, it pretty much failed before it got started. But you know what? It was It was supposed to happen that way because I was never supposed to do it there. Um, so I did it online. It was a strictly online, same thing, but I was, I did online courses and it really took off. And, um, we were teaching all of those things, uh, for about a year or so. And then I got more partners and now we have, uh, I have my Australian, uh, partners, Carly and Julia, and we have, um, almost 30 mentors and we started a platform that it was metaphysical, but now we've branched out to so many other things that we offer and it's, and it's turning into more uh, broad range. I don't like to say curriculum based because I hate the word curriculum. So we have, we are changing the trajectory of alternative education for children where it's self-directed learning. So we offer a variety of non-metaphysical classes as well. Creative writing, mindfulness, math, um, spiritual science, uh, all sorts of different uh, subjects, more than I can even remember right now. Um, mm -hmm. And we moved, my family and I moved to Florida recently so that we could open the first physical location here, um, which will have horses, will be more outdoor learning, everything that we're teaching online, but in, in, a, but in a physical space. And it will be the first of many because we will have them in every state. We'll, we'll expand internationally, so they'll be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and my vision is for it to be free. Uh, this is not about money, no profit. <clears throat> it's about free education for children where they thrive and they come first and they enjoy what they're learning. And there's no pro programming, no indoctrination. It's they get to decide what they learn and how they learn mm -hmm. it. And we have beautiful teachers that we call mentors uh, that are really here genuinely wanting to help them. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a beautiful thing that we started. And I named it, I changed the name to Aramis because... I realized a couple years in, it came to me and, and I was like, oh, this is what she wanted to do with me. And the reason I had that epiphany is because she said she was around the age of two, three years old. She wanted to, she told me she wanted to be a teacher and she was all about everything that I was doing to this day. She has a classroom in her room. She teaches. Um, mm -hmm. she, wants, she tells me she wants to be a teacher. She loves teaching. Her whole life is about teaching, teaching, teaching. Um, and I realized, oh my gosh, this is what she needed help with. So everything that I'm doing, I guess, is a catalyst for her to take it over at some point. Mm -hmm. And this is her legacy. This is her journey. This is why she's coming in, is to help the children all over the world have the education platform that she's probably used to where she comes from. And she's here mm -hmm. to bring it to the earth children. 
and I'm just so honored to be a part of it. So, so yeah, there's a lot. We have animation cartoons. We have 17 episodes out um, with the mm-hmm. characters that are named after my children, Aramis, Skylar, and Jordan, plus my Vivian, which is my grandmother. Um, and we and we teach children all about various topics: intuitive eating, energy, nature, the earth elements, spirit animals, spirit guides. I mean, you name it. It's in. We have 17 episodes packed full of fun information for kids, but it's in a cartoon. So it's more fun for them. So yeah, we have a lot of really fun stuff uh, in the works. That's amazing. Where, where can people find these, uh, the cartoons? So uh, you can easily find them through my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Sherry Divban. But I also have a link under my YouTube channel called divinely. The the cartoon is still called divinely guided children. I think Mm -hmm. it's divinely guided children media. And so I have a link to it within my YouTube channel, but I also uh, publish all of them in my YouTube channel intermixed with my interviews. But if children want to go on a safe YouTube kids, YouTube channel mm-hmm. it's there, and it's just those videos, no other, other adult content. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And Sherry has a, a YouTube channel. So everybody who's watching this, go give her a subscribe and check her out, especially if you have children or interested. Um, but you're also doing interviews about various, you know, awakening topics. Um, also, you said you kind of been venturing out a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm sure your your information, like email, if anybody wants to reach out to you, then they, they can do that. I'll have that information in the description as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Lily. This was a this was really fun for me. I I'm and enjoyed this so much. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. All right, everybody, have a good night. Bye. Bye, everybody.